Hello YouTube and welcome to Full Dottle, a channel dedicated to tamping topics such as pipes, tobacco, lore, and more. I am your host, the Bearded Briarman, and without further ado, let's get lit. Welcome back everyone, and on this episode of Full Dottle, I'm going to be giving my full review of Cornell and Dill's Riverboat Gambler. A little housekeeping, I am smoking my 7LE673KS Rusticated Fantasia. This blend was kind of a shocker for me because I'm not a big Burley fan, it's not that I dislike it, I'm just not a big fan of Burleys. And American blends being very rich and burly, it's not something that I, I simply don't enjoy. I just don't find myself smoking as many of them. But this blend, thanks to Jojo Piper, um, you can find his, a link to his channel right down in the bucket if you haven't visited his channel already. He asked me to, to uh, review this, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I am so thankful that he did because it has opened my mind a little more to American blends. This isn't that real harsh, um, burly type blend that you're going to be thinking of. Like the Cumberland has a very, although it's not a an American blend, but Cumberland has a lot of that harshness that people try to avoid. With this blend, I didn't find it to be very, very harsh. Uh, it's got, it's still a burly, so those who don't like burlies probably won't enjoy it. But it's not bad at all. I really enjoyed this blend. Also, as I smoked it, I noticed that the, that grassiness, that light grassy and citrusy flavor that I was getting from it were different than what a Virginia would give me. And so it was, it was kind of complexing to me. I also started noticing a flavor that I am a big fan of and I couldn't put my finger on it. So I contacted Jeremy Reeves over at Cornell and Dill he emailed me back and confirmed my suspicions. Those light, grassy, citrusy flavors that I was getting were actually coming from a certain type of oriental that's in it. The, I believe it's pronounced Bosma, uh, orientals that are in this blend. They were coming through. I knew they weren't Virginias, but I just couldn't pinpoint them and he confirmed that for me. He also confirmed that the tangy type rye berry flavor and the malted oat flavor, everyone knows what that is, that I was getting out of this, I thought, I thought the Virginias were bright Virginias. So when he emailed me back, he said, nope, they're actually red Virginias. And sure enough, I mean, I knew it, I could taste them, and I'm glad that I got a confirmation on that because it was starting to boggle my mind. At any rate, it was a very pleasant surprise because I could taste them and I knew they were there, but I just didn't read it in the tin description. So I guess I should put more faith in my palate rather than the tin, uh, the the uh, writing that's on the tin, the description on the tin. All right, so let's dive in. Starting off with a tin note, I gave it a three point five. I think it's got a pleasant tin note. It's, it gives you that uh, very robust, leathery, uh, woody, bready type uh, aromas. It's not bad at all. I think it's very pleasant, so I gave it a 3.5. It is sufficiently dry right out of the tin. Doesn't require any dry time. You can load it as soon as you open your tin and enjoy it right then. So I gave it a five for sufficiently dry. I'm also going to change up just a little bit on my rating form that I use here. Used to, I would have just simply pleasant fruit from the blend. But in a blend like this, like an American blend, you're not going to get a lot of fruit. 
and I don't want the blend to suffer simply because it doesn't have a fruit note in it. So I've also included fruit, nutty, and woody all on the same rating schedule, and for that I gave it a three. You definitely get that woodiness and that nuttiness from the burleys on this, but I also get there's a subtle sweetness to it that I get like bits of pecan in it. I say pecan, not pecan. Yeah, and I'm from Arkansas, so I'm definitely from the South, but at any rate, I get pecan in it, and I, I'm not sure, um, not sure where exactly that's coming from, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the burly in it is giving off just a little sweetness, and it's, and it's giving just a, a hint of pecan. At least I say, think I say pecan. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. But for fruit, nutty, and woody, I give it a three. For the spice, I also gave it a three. It's not crazy spice. Like this isn't one of, uh, it, this isn't Bayou Morning or um, Bayou Night that has such a, just a blast of perique. But it does give you that very pleasant spice in it. Not quite enough to give you the dark fruits from the perique. but it's definitely there on the retro hill. And so for that, I also gave it a three. For Tang, I gave it a 3.5, because as you're smoking this, it's very obvious that the Red Virginias in it are coming through. Very nicely, very pleasant Tang. It's not an abundant amount of Tang, but you definitely get that rye berry flavor that you get from the Red Virginias. I love it, and for that reason, I gave it a 3.5. For the sweetness, it's really right in the middle of the road at a 2.5. Those darker burleys are giving a little sweetness. I think it's pleasantly sweet. It's not abundantly sweet. This is definitely not a dessert blend like the Escudo uh, Navy Deluxe, but it has that underlying sweetness in it, a very subtle sweetness, very delicate, that you'll definitely pick up And for that, I gave it a 2.5. For depth, it's just a little past the midway point. Um, I really think the Orientals could be a little more vibrant, and I also think that the Perique could be a little more vibrant. Um, and so the complexity suffered just a little bit. You're not going to get so many layers out of this. You're going to get a very robust, earthy, nutty, woody. Uh, type American blend that's not as harsh as you might imagine an American blend to be. And so for that I gave complexity a three. However, most of the Americans that I've had in the past were a little bit on the harsh side. There was a roughness to them that that it was just sometimes it was a bit overwhelming. Not Overwhelming is not a good word. Sometimes it was just a bit difficult to get around that roughness. It kind of, uh, it kind of maintained your attention on it. It didn't allow you to really look past it much. But this blend actually was very pleasant to me. I think it gave just enough of that rough edge, that spice, and that robustness to keep you occupied, and it didn't take your attention away from the blend itself or from the complexity that it actually had to offer. So for balance, I gave it a four. For smoothness, I gave this blend a 2.5. As I said, it's not going to be uh, just not rough. I mean, it does have some rough edges on it. And if you smoke it too fast, it will have a tendency to it's almost like a bite that doesn't last. It's a temporary bite. It's only going to bite you while you're smoking it because it has that just a little bit of a harshness to it from those burleys and that perique. So just smoke it steady, smoke it, smoke it slowly, and you shouldn't get that. But it does have enough of a rough edge to it that on smoothness, I put it right in the middle at 2.5. And obviously for me, the high point of this bowl is those red Virginias coming through. I love 
the flavor profile of a Red Virginia. They came through nicely on this. Like I said, at first when I was expecting a Bright Virginia and I was tasting those Red Virginias, I was just like, what? Surprised me so much, I, I, I couldn't help it. 3.5 on the high point of the bowl because the tanginess of those Red Virginias come through. You're gonna catch them. You're gonna enjoy them if you like Red Virginias. Excellent blend. For me, the low point of the bowl, I gave it just under halfway mark at two because it does have that roughness of an American blend that those who don't like American blends, don't like Burleys, and don't like Periques are not going to be interested in this blend very much. I don't think it's going to please them as much as some of the lighter blends. However, it's not all that bad, so I gave it just under the halfway mark at two. As far as burns cool, I gave this a 4.5. This blend burns super fast, but it doesn't burn hot, and I put it through the rigors. This thing, if you're not careful, you're, if you don't pay attention to it at all, you're going to blink and, this, and your bowl is going to be over and you're going to be left wanting another bowl. It's going to cause you to smoke another bowl because, number one, it's that good. It deserves another smoke, but number two, it burns so fast that you're going to be left at the end of your bowl and not even realize you've gotten there. So take your time with it. Str stay present with it and just try to actually bring yourself into what you're doing. Take the time to make it a contemplative smoke. Think about what you're smoking, really dive into it and digest it and just take it apart. It's a, it's a great blend, I think, so really enjoy it. But it does burn fast, but it burns cool. I didn't, ha I didn't have the tendency to bite me and it didn't have the tendency to make my pipe heat up super hot, so for that I gave it a 4.5. All said and done, this blend gets a 43 out of 65, which puts it at a 67% recommendation rate. To me, I think if you enjoy those more robust type tobacco varietals out there, you're really gonna enjoy this. It's not very harsh. That The last one I did with the Cumberland was a pretty harsh blend. This is not like that. It's gonna give you just enough of that rough tongue feel that it's going to satisfy those that have that that type of an itch. It's also something that I think would be excellent after a meal. It can be a quick smoke. Uh, I found myself when my daughter was here and I didn't want to sit down and have like um, Escudo Navy Deluxe is a very long burn. It, it lasts forever. Bayou Morning Flake, a very long smoke. It wasn't like that. This one, if you wanted it to and didn't take your time, if you just smoked it like you normally would, it, it can easily give you a really quick 25, 30 minute smoke. And that's in my 673. So keep that in mind when you're smoking it, enjoy it, slow down, take your time with it. If you enjoy an American blend, 67%, that's pretty good. In my opinion, for an American blend, I would suggest it to even somebody who um, is a moderate smoker. So. Y'all enjoy it. That's going to do it for this episode of Full Doddle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Let me know how you feel about it down in the comment section. And until next time we see each other, I bid you farewell and happy piping. Goodbye, everyone. Don't forget to enlist in the Full Doddle platoon. It's easy. Just click the subscribe button. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload the next episode.